students. And welcome back to our next segment on geomorphology. Geomorphology, as you may remember from last time, is the study of Earth's landforms. And so yesterday we went over some basics of maps and we were able to explain and describe how we're able to pinpoint our exact position on a map using lines of longitude and latitude. But today we enter the third dimension. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The third dimension is depth and height. So as we enter the third dimension, we need to talk about hope graphic maps, topographic maps. I love topographic maps. There is so much information that can be gained from a topographic map, especially if you enjoy the outdoors like me, hiking, paddling, skiing, all of these things that you can do in the outdoors. You can enjoy so much more with topographic map knowledge. So I want to give you some of the basics here today on topographic maps so that you can begin creating one of your own. So a topographic map, what does it do? Well, a topographic map shows the relief of the land, the relief of the land. I'm going to be showing you some video clips and doing some demonstrations for you here uh, during this period after this video is over which will help illustrate topographic maps even better uh, before we get to our activity. But know basically that a topographic map takes map location a step further to the third dimension. It shows you in a two-dimensional representation what the three dimensions of a location actually are. Topographic map shows the relief, otherwise known as topography, with lines that we call contour lines. Contour lines. And if you look at this model here, and I'm going to show you one in real life in the lab, but our model here illustrates a cross section of a hillside. And I, I've got a model that's almost exactly like this one wait to show you next time. But here's a, a model, a cross section of a mountain. And if you were to draw lines of elevation on them and then flip the model upside up and look at it from the top, this is what it would look like. These lines are representing lines of equal elevation. And these lines of equal elevation are known as contour lines or topographic lines. So if we look at this contour map or topographic map of an island, here's the top of the island, here's the bottom of the island, and the closer the lines are to one another, the steeper the hill. So if you were in the water, in the, in the harbor or the lagoon here, and you wanted to climb to the top of the mountain peak. By looking at a topographic map, before you even get to the island, you could figure out what part of the island to land at in order to climb the easiest. If you landed your, your, your boat here, you'd have to climb basically a cliff to get to the top. So you'd better bring your climbing equipment if you landed your boat over here, this, because the, because the contour lines are spaced out a lot more, this is a gradual enough climb. You can climb it without any special gear. So being able to read a contour line, very, very important. But as we go through and we learn more about contour lines, we're going to be also learning about some local landforms that can also be shown on a topographic map because they're colorized too. So here we have blue areas and blue areas, as you can probably imagine on this map, could refer to rivers, 
streams, drainage areas, maybe swamps. Like here's symbols for swampy area over here. This would be a marsh. This obviously a river. This, this stream here drains into this river. And how do I know it's that way and not the other way? Well, because I've learned how to read topographic maps. But here are other features that we can see. Mountains, hills, and mounds. By looking at the shape of contour lines, they form basically concentric circles or features here. This is a peak or a high point on a topographic map as opposed to a low point. And we'll be learning how to read the contour lines and the topography on these maps. Some other features, valleys, depressions, quarries. These are lower areas on a contour map. And by reading the contour lines, this is a deep valley surrounded on both sides by mountains. So we know by looking at the shape of lines, and you will learn how to do this as we move throughout the week, this is a low point, this is a high point. Some other features that you can see, I actually pointed this out earlier, ponds and swamps. You know, this whole blue area, definitely and probably obvious to you that this is a pond. But these images here, these symbols on the map, which look like lily pads, represent swampy areas. So if you're going for a hike, you might want to avoid a swampy area unless you were doing some type of an environmental study and you were looking for frogs or turtles that are only found in swampy areas. Then you'd want to be going to those particular spots. Another uh, type of local landforms that you can make out on these types of maps are floodplains and steep slopes. Plains are areas where contour lines are very spaced out from one another. Steep slopes, on the other hand, are areas where the contour lines are very close together, like on that island map I showed you before. So this, these lines here, much steeper than these lines here. The more spaced out contour lines are, the more gradual the slope. All right, so let's go over some basic rules to contour lines. Learning some basic rules is going to help you as we try to navigate our way around topographic maps. So let's go over the basic rules now. Number one, contour lines will never, ever cross. And there's a reason for this. Every contour line is a different elevation. So if, if this line is at this elevation, another elevation will be at this line. If we're creating a two-dimensional map of a three-dimensional area of having different elevations, you can't cross contour lines because you can't have one point on a map that is two elevations at the same time. It would be like standing on top of your roof and in your basement at the same time. It just doesn't happen. So you never cross contour lines. Number two, mentioned this already a number of times, but the closer together contour lines, the steeper the slope. And the converse of that is also true farther apart contour lines are from one another, the more gentle the slope. So looking at the spacing of contour lines help you to see how steep or how gradual the hills on a particular topographic map may or may not be. So three very important rules of reading contour lines, but we're not done yet. Rule number four, contour lines form loops around hills and holes. As you start working with 
contour uh, maps or topographic maps, you're going to see this very clearly. That uh, when you've got a hill, contour lines go around hills when you are viewing it from the top. And the same is true of holes. And the type of holes that we most likely will see on our maps are quarries or gravel pits or mines or areas around lakes or ponds. But in either case, whether hills or holes, contour lines form loops. Next, this is a really important one. Rule number five of contour lines is that they form V's or V shapes in valleys, V for valleys, and they always point upstream or uphill. So when you see contour lines that are in the shape of V's and you're wondering which way is up and which way is down, especially if you're planning a hike or a trip or a tour or, or a, a survey mission or something, using a topographic map, and I'm talking whether it's paper map or digital map, same is true. The point of the Vs point uphill or upstream. So if you see Vs in a valley and you see a blue line going through the Vs, it's a stream or a river. Streams or rivers always flow downhill, which means they will flow out of the mouth of the V shapes. So you'll know by looking at a topographic map which way rivers are flowing by looking at the shape of the contour lines around them. All right, we're gonna do a quick little activity here before we prepare for our big activity. So on the bottom of your page, you've got some pictures here. And the pictures illustrate two-dimensional contour maps or topographic maps on the left and cross-sectional uh, uh, profiles of a landform over on the right-hand side. And what I'd like you to do is consider which topographic map matches up with which profile. Now, with this particular exercise, I think what I would do is look at it in reverse. If you look at the column of the profiles first and then try to translate that into a topographic map, it might be easier for you to distinguish. So if you look at that first uh, cross section, for instance, what do you see? This first cross section or profile is showing two different mounds. Now, with that hint being given, I'm going to ask you to pause the video right now and see if you can complete this activity with no more hints and, and then play the video and see if you got them all correct or not. If you need more hints, you can just keep on playing the video. But what you wanna do is try to find the contour map that matches up with the two peaks. So pause now if you wanna challenge yourself. All right, perhaps you chose the contour map that shows two concentric circles. These two groups of loops show two mountaintops or two hills. So A6 is the first right combination. Now, if you don't want any more hints, pause it and work on it on your own. Otherwise, I'm going to work through the remaining correct answers. B, profile B here represents two peaks, one taller than the other. Correct answer is number one, number one. And you can see here that this is a shallower peak and this is a taller peak, more contour lines higher elevation. C4 is the next right answer. You can see how this profile is steeper on this side, more gradual on the right. Steeper on this side, more gradual on this side, illustrated by the contour lines. D3 
three. D3 has a more gradual incline than uh, A. Some of you might have been confused between A and D. Totally understandable. But notice that there's more of a plateau between the two peaks in D compared to the deeper valley in profile A. That can be seen in the topographic maps between 6 and 4. Three. Brings us to E2. E2. Almost looks like a pyramid. In fact, this would be pretty much the contour map of a pyramid-shaped mountain. And finally, F is 5. F is almost the opposite of C, so you can see that the contour lines are spaced out on the left, grouped together on the right to represent the steeper slope on the right, and the more gradual slope on the left. And so that little activity will prepare us in reading the topographic map and working with the topograph for tomorrow's lab activity that looks like this. Wowie kazowie, it may look overwhelming right now, but don't panic. We're gonna work through this together and I will help you out. But for this video, I'm going to call it quits for now so that our next video will focus completely on our topographic map lab activity. So for now, I'll say bye-bye.